After four years of construction, Notre Dame de Paris will open its doors to the public on December 8, 2004. With nine months to go, will we be able to meet our objectives? To find out, we're going to take a chronological look at the progress of the works over the months of December, January, and February. First, we'll look at the interior, then the walls, then the progress of the framework, and finally, the spire. On December 18th, 2023, the scaffolding in the heart of the cathedral was gradually removed, revealing the splendor of the cleaned and restored sanctuary. Thanks to their dismantling, many masterpieces will be restored in the coming months. These include the wrought iron railings, the carved wooden stalls, and the bronze angels. A week later, in the cellar near the foundations, Preventive excavations enabled archaeologists to unearth burials. A total of nine lead coffins were brought out for detailed study. At the same time, an ancient wall dating back over 2,000 years was discovered. At the end of January, after several years of design work, the sonography of the future showcases for the treasury of Notre Dame de Paris was completed. The 21 old showcases, fully restored by Violet Le Duc, will be complemented by nine new glass showcases. At the same time, since the scaffolding in the choir was dismantled, the restoration of the choir's masterpieces has accelerated. Such is the case of Louis XIII's vow. We can see that the marble pieta, showing the Virgin Mary in tears and presenting Christ dead and fallen from the cross has been cleaned. The same applies to the two sovereigns on either side and the six bronze angels carrying the instruments of the passion that surround them. On February 11th, carpentry work intensified. Etablissement Gifford restored two pieces of wooden furniture in the cathedral. The preacher's chair, badly damaged by the fire, has been restored to its original condition. Today it has been restored to its original condition. All that remains is to varnish it to restore the original color of the wood. At the same time, restoration of the stalls is also progressing. After cleaning over the summer, the carpenters are now able to locate the missing carvings, which they mark with pieces of tape. They can then glue them back in place. In fact, some pieces were held in place with glue, but came unstuck with the water and heat of the fire. It's also worth noting that all the old parquet floors will soon be removed and refinished, and in July, the front doors will be restored. Finally, the cleaning of the wrought iron railings surrounding the heart is well underway. Interestingly, the grills bear the monograms of both Louis XIV and Napoleon III, bearing witness to the cathedral's rich history. Now, taking a step back in time, we find ourselves a few days before the beginning of December, when the Statue of Christ made its grand return to the top of the South Gable. Removed in the aftermath of the fire and restored, the sculpture has been reassembled on a gable, which has itself been almost entirely rebuilt. Once the statue was securely fixed on its final plinth, Philippe Villeneuve, chief architect for historic monuments, had the privilege of repositioning Christ's two hands. On December 1, the West Gable was completed. Located at the rear of the cathedral's west facade, between the two towers, the upper part of the gable wall suffered from the flames and smoke that the wind blew in its direction. Dismantled stone by stone, the stonemasons completed the reassembly revealing the face of the wall that is usually hidden by the roof structure. The scaffolding used to access the wall has also been dismantled. All that remains of the gable is the return in 2024 of the statue of the angel with the elephant, copied by the sculptors who surmounted it. Finally, in yet another direction, on January 4th, the statue on the north gable will be restored, representing Saint Denis, the first bishop of Paris. Restored, he looks towards the basilica that bears his name to the north of the capital. Now, on February 15th, thanks to the erection of two scaffolding structures, 
the restoration of the south and east facades of the north belfry has begun. Unlike the south tower, the Beffroi Nord was feared to have collapsed, as its structural strength was affected by the fire. As you can see, restoration of the walls is progressing on all fronts. The stained glass windows, a masterpiece of Gothic art, have been completely cleaned and restored, covering more than a thousand square meters of openings. The cross heads have been faithfully restored to their original blonde shell-like color. Thanks to the work of the craftsmen, the difference between the rebuilt and the old part is invisible. The murals have also been completely restored showing all the finesse and precision of such a project. As for the restoration of the gargoyles and wall sculptures, work continues in the hangar at the foot of the cathedral. Continuing the trend towards completion of the many restorations, after six months in place, the transept framework was completed on December 6th. Of all the parts of the framework destroyed in the fire, this was the first to be completed. Restored to its original state in oak, the framework of the two arms of the transept is made up of trusses on which purlins rest, and which in turn support the triangular rafters that complete the framework. This is a different system from that used for the nave and choir. All that's left is for the dormers and the roof to be fitted. Now, three days before Christmas, the carpenters are putting in place the spandrel that closes off the choir. In early January, in order to prevent another devastating fire, a unique fire protection system was installed. Placed in the cathedral's attic and spire, these pipes deliver a pressurized water mist that can be diffused throughout the structure if a fire is detected. In this way, billions of water droplets smother the fire. On Friday, January 12th, carpenters and joiners completed the choir frame at Notre Dame de Paris. As the framing work nears completion, it's time for the roofers to get into action on January 23rd. As can be seen, the frames have begun to be fitted with light scaffolding, enabling the roofers to get to work over the coming months. They can now lay the first battens on which the lead tables will be fixed. Continuing our ascent, it was on December 2 that we discovered the rapid progress of the spire. With the installation of the needle, a new milestone is reached. If you look closer, you can see the name of General George Lynn engraved on the spire. This was done to honor the memory of the former president of the construction site. Eight days later, the cross was back in place at the top of the spire. The cross at the top of the spire was made in a workshop in Lorraine. The cross is an assembly of iron, copper, and lead, made entirely by hand. To recreate it, original pieces from Violet Le Duc's era were used as models, such as the case of the roses in the rose wreath. Once completed, the wreath and certain ornaments on the cross were adorned with gold leaf. On Saturday, September, some of us were able to see it in the Paris skies. The spire of Notre Dame reached its summit with the installation of the cockerel. Designed by Philippe Villeneuve, this new copper cockerel houses the relics previously contained in the old one, which was damaged in the fire. This is the last stage before the roofers and ornamentalists take over. At the beginning of February, after months of assembly, the scaffolding on the spire, which had reached a height of 100 meters, began its descent, revealing the cross and cockerel at the top. After the carpenters rebuilt the spire in a massive chain, the roofers took over on February 9th to cover it with a thin layer of lead and the many lid ornaments such as chimeras, gargoyles and hooks designed by Violet Le Duc. For months, Roofers had been preparing the work in the workshop. The advantage of the workshop, as opposed to on-site, is that it offers the most favorable conditions, more space and freedom from the vagaries of the weather. There, they have access to full-scale fur templates, such as the one for the spire's needle, 
which measures around 30 meters. This enables them to create the ornaments, which are then shaped or, more often, molded. After all this process, the lead elements are carefully packaged for transport to the building site, then grouted as close as possible to the framework. A few days later, before placing the lead tables on the needle, the roofers first cover the framework with volige, dry oak planks. They then place a layer of waterproof paper, known as English paper, over the boards to separate the wood from the lead boards that will follow. After these two steps, the roofers place the tables one on top of the other. As lead is very malleable, they can apply the finishing touches by striking it with a mallet and bat. Finally, the first of the 192 hooks adorning the needle are positioned on the metal supports. Finally, on February 12th, the scaffolding used to install the spire was dismantled. Estimated to take several months, dismantling has to be as quick as possible for two reasons. The first is that it rests on the cathedral floor, crossing the vaults of the transept crossing. It therefore needs to be removed to allow reconstruction of the vaults to be completed. Secondly, the spire must be fully visible for the Olympic Games in July. So, with nine months to go before the inauguration, will we be able to meet our objectives? The answer is most certainly yes, bearing in mind that the cathedral will also be able to welcome 14 million visitors a year, 2 million more than before the fire.